looks changing. Yes, it is. You just can't see it. No. Because I'm doing it very subtle. Subtle. Okay. It's been a while since you started doing that. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> okay, I think we're ready. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> I've been ready for ages. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like what I'm wearing. Oh, I look God, like you're at a business so... meeting. You know what? Let me get my little crow. Oh, right, I get your little crows. <laughs> so much shadow. On you look really shiny. Do you look no, I don't look really shiny. Can I just powder your nails? No. Do you have blotting paper? No, I have blotting powder. I don't like blotting powder. Because it mattifies the skin. I don't oh, like right. it. I'd rather look. <clears throat> it was shiny. <clears throat> Okay, girl. Should I start with something like this? Yeah, like no, still like this. <laughs> okay. No, we look like we buy too many candles. We do. Yeah, we, we do. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Hello, everybody. Robert Welsh. Hi, everybody. Okay. <laughs> A couple of videos back, I mentioned how you need to be reapplying sunscreen mm. all the time. If you're wearing it, I mentioned how you're meant to reapply it every two hours. And one of the main questions I got was, was how do you reapply sunscreen over makeup? I don't wear makeup. So I don't really know. I have a few ideas. I thought I'd invite Robert, who is a makeup Hi. artist. Hi. Robert Welsh. <laughs> he was a makeup artist, so he knows this kind of stuff. So I thought we'd go through a few different products, how effective they actually are, and what you can do instead of using these not so effective products. Yes. Okay. Um, one thing I want to make clear, when I talked about a reapplying sunscreen every two hours, that is if you are sat out in the sun. So if you're at home, like we are now, you don't have to be reapplying sunscreen every two hours. When you're at home or at work, for example, it, it depends. It mm. depends. Like if we were to be sitting in front of that window with the sun coming in, It'll be different, but we'll talk about that in a bit. <laughs> One thing I thought we'd address straight away is the effectiveness of SPF in moisturizer and sunscreen. Go on. Um, it's not cool. Cool. <laughs> so while sunscreen, SPF in moisturizers and makeup is kind of like approved in the same way sunscreen is, so it, it's an effective SPF. The problem is, is that we likely don't use enough of those products. Mm. Oh, you've not said anything, so I just realised. No, I mean, it's your channel. I'm just, I'm okay. just this, um, a guest. <laughs> we'll come to him in a minute. I'm later. <laughs> so, moisturiser, for example, you're probably likely to use a lot more than you would do um, tinted foundation. Yeah. Tinted foundation. Tinted. <laughs> As opposed to foundation with no with colour. With no colour. <laughs> I mean like, um, like, um, uh, like BB creams, yeah, for example, yeah. or foundations or concealers right. with SPF in, you're not going to use enough. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're going to use it as your reapplication, like you can't reapply <laughs> mm -hmm. so the mm -hmm. correct amount of Absolutely. tinted, <laughs> Tint you, tinted product. You, 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 you say <laughs> it, you say it. Oh. Oh, sure. So when it comes to makeup, obviously you can't apply enough or reapply enough of a product, a makeup product with SPF in for it to actually be effective. Yes. Um, in order and to get a natural it, or whatever yeah, kind of look you want. I, if you think about, especially things like tinted moisturizer, that's a very, um, even with foundations, it's a very personal kind of thing as to how much you use of that product. Some people like a pea size, some people like a jug. So a good example I always like to use is this picture from Hannah English, who for me is like the sunscreen queen. Like I follow her on Instagram and love all her sunscreen recommendations, but she actually uses, um, does an example where she uses the required amount of um, a concealer or whatever product foundation, it is, foundation, foundation, that you actually need to use to get effective coverage. And as you can see, the picture will be on the screen, it's just way too much. <laughs> and that is a problem with makeup and moisturizers with SPF. So whilst yes, they are effective, they're effective if you use the correct amount, which is too much. Talking about the reapplication of sunscreen now and when and if you have to reapply it, as I mentioned, it completely depends on what you're doing. If you look on the back of most sunscreen, it will say reapply every two hours. That's because they're presuming you're out in the sun. So especially like here in the UK, I feel like in the, in England, people only think you have to use sunscreen if you're at the beach. Yeah, or if you're on holiday. If, yeah, if you're on holiday, like yeah. yeah. But so they always presume you're out in the sun, reapply every two hours, which is yes, a very good rule of thumb. However, if you're inside all day, it completely depends how much sun is coming through. Like I work in a well-lit room, so I reapply my sunscreen, but maybe once every four hours. And then I go to my living room, which has like not a lot of natural light, so I don't bother. You know, it completely depends. You can obviously shut out all the light as well. But the thing 
thing is, even though UVB rays may not be getting to you, UVA rays are coming through the windows, which means, I think UVB does as well, but mainly those UVA rays are still getting to you, which is the aging side of it. So if that is a concern for you, then you do need to reapply if you're sat by a window all day. Okay, so let's talk about how to, I think we're gonna talk about how to apply sunscreen as kind of like a good base, first of all, and then um, how to reapply over makeup. So it's actually reapplication time for me because I will be going out in the sun <laughs> after this. Is that time already? I'm going to be using the COSRX Snail Essence Sun SPF 50 plus, PA 3 pluses. I overuse my sunscreen because I'm terrible at getting an even spread. So I think if I use more, there's more chance that I'm going to get an even spread. But also the technique I'm about to do may take a bit of sunscreen away from your face, but it also gives a more even coverage, if that makes sense. So I do like to over apply. So I take my SPF could you talk to us really quickly? Yeah. And especially for someone like me who's not so skincare based. P A plus plus. Yeah. Plus plus. Yeah. What? What? What does that mean? Oh, so to put it very, very simply, the SPF sun protection factor, 50 plus for example, is how long you can stay out in the sun without burning. Mm. The PA plus 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 is more about the UVA rays. And that's the aging. And that's the aging. UV aging. Yeah, UV burning. But is that actually what it is? Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh. But that's how you can remember oh. <laughs> it. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm applying a fair bit. Liberally. I'm actually can. not going to do it in my beard because I'm literally going to the car back into a house. So I'm not going to go for the effort. No, we're going astronauting. Oh, we're going to go, um, what's it called? Ash or norconauting. Um, oh God. Orbanauting. Oh God, I'm going to do some Rand Rando 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 So then I like to get a reusable puff. These are on Amazon. I'll link them down below. They're silicone, so you can rewash them. It's like beauty sponge. Mm. Um, and they just pat in. Like this. And when do you stop patting until it feels like it's abs absorbed by the skin? Is that when when it looks use? like it's um, even. And then usually, I'm just an example now, but I will do a few layers of this just to make sure I'm all covered. So I can already tell that I've not, I've missed a few areas in the nose. I've missed um, my uni brow here. I'm gonna have to apply more to that layer. Obviously you don't have those like zinc filters, for example, that show up pure right. white. Don't go in your beard. God, this, your lighting really does show up every kind of bit of glow, doesn't it? That's why I wear too much makeup on camera. Just on camera, huh? <laughs> so that's how I like to apply it. And I think that gives you quite an even base as mm. far as like um, making sure it's spread out during the day. Yeah, you look great. I look so oily on here now. <laughs> but that will settle down. That's the thing, yeah. it'll settle down. Then as I said, I'll do a few more layers of that usually just to make sure I've got everywhere. And take it down to your neck also. Take it right down to the nipples or how, how much skin <laughs> you're gonna show. Yeah. I was gonna say as well, start off your day with a high factor sunscreen. Also sweat proof and waterproof makes a good initial base as far as the sunscreen you're gonna use because I used to, <laughs> living in London, I would sweat when I went to work all the time, like my face would be like. So it's good to kind of have that um, resistant sunscreen so it's not ruined first thing in the morning. Before we get on how to apply, sorry, you will come I'll into just this wait soon. Over <laughs> Before we talk about how to reapply with makeup, if you don't wear makeup throughout the day, what I personally do, blot my face with blotting tissue, reapply that um, sunscreen. You don't have to wash your face every time you reapply sunscreen. If you do find that you're really sweaty and it's unbearable, Wash your face with a gentle cleanser, use a moisturizer only, and then use your sunscreen. You don't have to do a full routine. But I wouldn't recommend washing your face continuously every time you need to reapply. Sure. And then just make sure you wash it off in the evening. So when it comes to reapplying sunscreen throughout the day over makeup, sorry. Sorry, we're laughing because it's taken so long just to say that sentence. <laughs> ah, we made it. You know what you mean. It's the title of the video. Yeah. So it isn't, this shouldn't be your option, if that top, makes top sense. Priority. It shouldn't be your top priority. Your SPF, which touches your skin, your primer goes on top, should be your priority. Like the the one that does the work. Exactly, the one that does the hardcore work. You, There are absolutely products available to retouch up your makeup and including sun protection in that. However, just for touching up, not your dedicated products. They're not really enough, basically. Yeah. So there is an option that we can go through, which is probably a lot more and um, betterer. <laughs> yeah, more betterer. More betterer. Works better than the ones I'm about to show you, but we will just run through those very quickly. So, so we have our first option, which is a sunscreen setting spray. So this is SPF 30, and this is a makeup setting spray. So you can use this, of course, on top of your makeup. However, 
In terms of the way it spritz, it does spritz like a fine mist. I'll do it on me. Okay. Because I'm actually wearing makeup. I'm just gonna go. Yeah, please do. It's quite a heavy, strong <clears throat> smell. Oh, it's all over your nice blaze. That's it. fine. Oh, and it's in my eye. So the only thing with that now is I can feel my face is slightly wet, like you would have with a setting spray, but I can't guarantee I've covered my whole face. So I, I bet I haven't covered up my forehead here, which is where more than likely I would catch the sun a little mm. bit um, quicker. Bridge of my nose, maybe because I did it right there, but everywhere else, ears, back of neck, everything like that, isn't really protected as well as it could be. So yeah. my options would be with this spray is to drench my face in a product, you might kind of break down your makeup initially in that case. Or I could, throughout the day, if I was touching up throughout the day with this, I would have to spray this product, drench my face, and then with a brush, something like this, kind of buff it into that foundation to renew that foundation texture. Right. However, then if you've used a powder or a blush, you're then messing with the textures again. So it isn't really the best option in terms of touching up. What you could do, which is a really horrible option as well and might not even be accurate in any way whatsoever, is take the amount, I believe it's a teaspoon for the face and neck, is take a teaspoon, spray it onto the teaspoon and see how many sprays it takes to get that whole teaspoon's worth. That's a good idea. What that doesn't guarantee though is even coverage mm -hmm. still again. And that's kind of what you want with sun protection, you want yeah. even coverage. You just don't want to protect a bridge of your nose. Think yeah. how much is falling everywhere else as well. I mean, I've face. got it all over here. I mean, I love that product just as a setting spray. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be my go-to SPF though, that's yeah. the thing. Um, so let's talk about what we have next. So this is a clear finishing powder with mm -hmm. SPF. It's SPF 46 PA plus plus plus. Random number. Yeah, mm. 46.1. <laughs> <laughs> so this you have a few options. So it comes like this with this um, pad up here. However, you can screw this off here and then you have your loose powder underneath. Oh, so you can just apply use like a brush. Yeah, absolutely. You can get a more even coverage with this than you would your setting spray. Mm. However, <laughs> It's like there's no option. Building up that product throughout the day on top of um, an oilier skin or something like that, we all know you can't use too much powder because you get that cakey, powdery texture. Mm. So we don't really want to use that too often. I think it would be great for touching up once. If you're extremely oily, maybe you can blot and add some more, but you're still gonna get that uneven texture. But save it for a time where it's kind of like you're, oh, I have this as my backup. And that's the thing with these makeup um, sun protection products for touching up, it's almost backup. It's not your yeah, like, you know, your Yeah, then nothing core. to rely on, mm. basically. Mm. So this is gonna be our last and actually our better option. Mm. So let's take a look at SPF Compact. So they yes. come in a style of cushion foundations. Um, I'm sure we've all seen cushion foundations by now, right? Yeah, every, I guess every brand so. seems to have them. Yeah. They tend to be a little bit um, thicker in texture, maybe a little bit denser in terms of um, the actual product itself. However, they are so much easier to apply straight on top of makeup. Here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> if you are wearing blush, if you are wearing something that's quite powdery, so you have a drier skin and your makeup doesn't tend to kind of get involved with the oils off your skin, you might use just a refreshing mist first to kind of renew the texture of your makeup, renew the texture of any powder products you're wearing, then go on top with this product. So I would literally use a hydrating mist, not a setting spray, a hydrating mist. So something that's very watery, it doesn't have that kind of gripping texture to it. Mm. And then like James used at the beginning, um, they usually do come with a pad inside the sponge. Um, literally use that like James used it in the beginning. Don't put the product over the face first, you wanna go in the compact. And I would concentrate on one area at a time. I think it's nice when you're doing makeup to kind of split your face up. <laughs> Not in real life, but just, just cut it around. <laughs> <laughs> but like in sections, so cheeks, nose, forehead, um, neck, um, eyes. And then concentrate on getting a full coverage on each of those sections of the face. Right. Mm. And that way you get this really nice kind of creamier um, texture on the skin, really hydrated looking. And then you can mattify on top after a few minutes with a powder, your SPF 46 um, powder. <laughs> and then just don't worry about using a setting spray or anything else like that. Yeah. That's probably the best way to retouch, but do be delicate. Prep for skin before with a hydrating mist because you want to boost that drier texture of the foundation. Mm. Or if you're oily, renew the texture of the foundation and then go on top with that option. Yeah, a lot of these compacts do tend to be on the more physical side of sunscreen, so inorganic sunscreen. So they do tend to be that more white cast. Mm. However, a lot of the Korean um, formulations, even when it comes to these mineral sunscreens, are a lot nicer Absolutely. in the fact that they don't leave you white, white cast. Yeah, and if you're if we're talking about makeup, let's say we're talking about your wedding day or something like that, you don't want that white cast on the skin because when someone takes a picture of you, you're going to be completely washed oh, out. Fuck sunscreen on your wedding day if it's going to mess up your makeup. <laughs> 
Just one day. <laughs> yeah, I get, get your spray. Get, get your, your spray. spray but that's the thing as well, is it might look white to begin with. Literally give it 20 minutes, not to activate or anything like that, but it's going to settle on your skin really nice. Well, fine. But are there any makeup products, as far as foundations, concealers, highlighters, blushes, that you would avoid especially in peak summer when you're having mm, to apply mm. this maybe more regularly, that doesn't work as well when reapplying. Yeah, anything that is going to change the texture of your original foundation. So that includes powders, um, whether it's a blotting powder, bronzing powder, highlighting powder, any powder product that is going to change the texture of your initial foundation. Creams. It's a hot summer. I know cream isn't the ideal because we almost don't want it to... Um, like fall off a face or melt off a face, but you can use tints. You can use cheek tits. Oh, sorry. Cheek tits. Cheek <laughs> tints. So cheek tints, lip tints, things like that. And that way you don't have to worry too much about sunscreen interfering with the texture of your foundation. Here's mm. the thing though. It's really difficult with makeup and trying to put things on top because foundations are made to be a certain texture. Powders are made to be a certain texture to do things to your makeup. So when it comes to reapplying, you need to think about renewing that product so anything with powder is easily renewable you yeah. know we get, we get oily and it makes it like this um cream texture as gross as it is it makes our foundation like a different texture even if you are using a powder foundation mm. um so anything that you can reboost re kind of um retexture and then you can easily put whatever on top but you want to stay away from powder texture so say i wanted to retouch up my sunscreen later in the day i would do my primer then I would do um, my liquid foundation, BB cream, um, cream foundation. Then I would use a tint or something like that, or a cream blush on the cheeks, a tiny, tiny little bit. Um, and then kind of leave it at that in even a cream bronzer. But also, <laughs> but here's the deal as well. We position our products so um, specifically when you apply sunscreen, that might get a little bit messed up. Yeah. So the ideal is, and I, I mean, on the days where it's really hot, you don't want to wear that much makeup anyway, a lot of people. Mm. So it's kind of nice just to have that one layer of foundation and do a really nice like tinted cheek, tinted lip, have this really nice like monochromatic look where everything is just one nice neutral tone. Um, and then it's so much easier to cover up that way. Yeah. I think if you're ever in a position where you have to reapply your sunscreen every two hours, mm. you're probably in a position where you don't want to be wearing sunscreen anyway, for example, makeup, um, makeup anyway. Not that I'm here to say who should wear makeup and when but if you're sat on a beach mm -hmm. a full face of makeup probably isn't the best option for, um, as far as like you're sweating as well and your makeup's gonna be running down your face mm -hmm. and if, if you're ever in a position where you do have to religiously reapply every two hours probably on holiday on a beach or you're by a pool you're probably in a, in a, um, a space where you don't want to be wearing too much makeup right. anyway right. also don't forget your lips you can just wear a lip balm and that's super easy to reapply mm. that's it of course, all the products will be linked in the description box. Uh, what I'll get Robert to do is make a list of um, products that will sit well under sunscreen reapplication. If you do have any questions for us, leave them in the comments down below. Go and subscribe to Robert. Subscribe. You might not want to now. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that is it from us now. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.